Kia ora. Um, thanks very much for that. I was just reflecting on my father who was part of the rugby racing and beer culture and that was where he found his source of support from other men and as he aged when the rugby and the racing were no longer there it was the beer and the pub that was all that was left and I'm wondering whether that has sort of you know resonance with any other parts of our ageing communities. Yeah, yeah, I might engage my quiet side now. <laughs> I, 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 um, I don't know how to answer that question except to say that it uh, quite possibly would. Um, but I think it hi highlights another point in that um, some accepted cultural practices aren't, uh, don't always provide for positive mental health and well-being. Um, and I think the key is to adopt those practices that do, as opposed to those, those that don't. And going back to our definition about these behaviours that become accepted and embedded, um, quite often that's an excuse to, um, I guess, um, rationalise or promote bad behaviours. That's the way that we've always done it. Um, so I think it's a good, good question, but I feel another one's coming along too. <laughs> Well, it was partly, it's not so much drinking because in, in my father's case he didn't, but it was like the pub was the only cultural setting for him to be meeting mm. with his Pākehā male peers of the same group. And I'm wondering how much that is also a, a, a social um, deficit um, in, our, in our communities, you know, especially for people once they leave the workforce, where do they actually get that support? Mm. I was hoping that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> Good question. And uh, you, you, you once I reach that age, I will let you know. Kia ora. Kia ora, te kani. Oh, Mel kia ora. Robson. Kia ora, Mel. Uh, Māori Mental Health, actually. One of the uh, issues that probably confronts my service as a kaupapa Māori service is the sense that... Um, there is some cultural difference that can contribute to wellness and well-being for Māori. And I, I suppose after getting your definition of culture, it's in, and just from the previous questioner, you know, the, what we define as being our culture and therefore set some cultural constructs about what we think is the norm, um, I'm just wondering whether or not there has been any research to consider the fact that there are cultural values and belief systems that do have a positive affirming effect for Māori, and not only for Māori, but for non-Māori. Mm. And I'm just wondering whether or not um, in the future you would consider that as being a stream that we could go down and use that and redefine that uh, so that it does create the positive aspect for Māori. Yeah. And that wellness and well-being actually is a component of total wellness. Um, and the previous speaker, the uh, GP, um, talked about how wellness uncovers everything. And so that's my question really is, uh, do you think that we could draw the values and principles from Te Ao Māori and, and create the framework that Mason Dewey has referred to in the past? Yeah, sure. um, again, a good, good question. Uh, well, and thank you for asking a long question. It gave me time to think about a response. <laughs> um, I, I, I think, I, I really believe that uh, Māori mental health services have been doing that for a number of years. And I think they're leading the health sector, not only nationally, but internationally, in terms of the application of culture to health in positive ways. And there's a number of uh, well, services that have been around for years. Um, a Fayora, um, Te Whare Marie, um, Manawanui, and I guess they were the early, I guess, services that actually explored the application of culture to health and particularly to mental health. And fortunately, there's been a number of good practitioners that have been able to apply culture, Māori culture, to a mental health setting in a positive way and also in ways that take into account cultural diversity. Um, Māori are no longer a homogenous group, and I think the mental health sector, mental health practitioners, 
and, uh, and again looking at Matero, have appreciated the need to actually apply culture in a meaningful way, in a positive way, and also in ways that matters, ways that matter uh, to the people receiving care, as opposed to those administering care. And that's another big challenge, and that sometimes, um, and not not always, but uh, clinicians might administer cultural therapy in ways that are meaningful to them. <laughs> but they may resonate less to those actually using the service. So I think a very uh, dynamic horses for courses approach is required. I think that there's uh, development required in, in, in that area, but I think the Māori mental health sector have, like I said, uh, leading nationally and also internationally in terms of applying models um, uh, that support this notion of culture and, and health and wellbeing. Okay, kia ora. Please put your hands together for Dr. Takane Kingi.